All right, guys, so I'm here with an update. Um, I will probably add this to my exosomes playlist because it's related to the exosomes, even though it's not um, the exosomes. I'm not talking about exosomes technically, but I am talking about my IVIG. If you have been following my exosomes um, experience, you will know that I had to stop IVIG in April of this year. Right now I am in November. I'm not sure when I'm going to post this update. Um, probably soon. I'm probably, if, since it's just an update, I should probably put it sometime soon. So I had to stop IVIG mid April because I felt that it was interacting with the exosomes. Um, and you know, I, I was having like headaches, neck pain, just a lot of weird stuff going on. And so I stopped it and I saw some relief in some of those symptoms. Granted, I still had a lot of um, flaring from the exosomes themselves. So I just assumed it's an exosome thing. I just need to take a break from IVIG. Um, I then tried it again for a second time. I think it was the first week of August and there should be an update on that. It's probably in the exosomes playlist. And still was not responding well to the IVIG. I did five grams, which is a tiny dose. I, I infuse it subcutaneously, so I shouldn't be having much of an issue with it. Um, this time, um, so that was August. It's the beginning of November right now. So I, I did a 2.5 gram dose of uh, subcutaneous IVIG, well, sub-QIG, I did that on Sunday, so the day before Halloween, that was the 30th. Yeah, Sunday was the 30th because Halloween was on Monday. Um, obviously, it's a much smaller dose, and the reason I did a very small dose is because I did not want to, if I was going to react badly to it, I did not want to have the lingering effects. It can linger for about two weeks. Um, and yes, I'm still reacting badly to it, um, so, you know, I... I tend to have a headache, um, some neck pain. This time the neck pain wasn't as bad, but probably because the dose was so small. Um, and then my muscles start getting stiffer, the muscles that are affected, which is my pelvic floor, my thoracic area, and then of course the head and neck area. Um, so, you know, I just started, um, I noticed immediately the next day. The weird thing though was that the night of the infusion, um, I had some other weird stuff. Um, basically, I had um, like my sinuses kind of, I guess they, they got swollen or something because I couldn't breathe. Like I felt like I couldn't breathe through my nose. Um, and I noticed that the night of. And again, a lot of this was, you know, I was knocked out because if you've ever done IVIG, you have to take Benadryl and Tylenol beforehand and the IVIG itself will knock you out. So that's one of the side effects, a common side effect of IVIG is that it knocks you out and you're just out cold. Um, so I was in a deep sleep and, um, you know, I was having these issues while I was like asleep and it was kind of like waking me up. So my sleep was disturbed, but it was almost like I was, you know, I, I could barely, you know, wake up because I was so <laughs> drugged. So I noticed that and then something weird happened with my hands. And again, this kind of, it's starting to scare me a little bit because I can't do my IVIG anymore. Granted, I, I feel like I've been okay without it. Not, I'm not great without it, but I feel like I've, I've been surviving without it. Um, you know, so I, I, I'm kind of like, well, maybe it's not that bad. Um, I did have, you know, if you saw my, my nine month, um, exosomes update, I had a bout of diarrhea at the beginning of October and I got really scared because I thought that my intestinal spasms were coming back and there was just something that told me, and I, I immediately wanted to get back on my IVIG because I, I know that the IVIG usually stops the intestinal spasming and there was something that told me like, just don't do it you know, just leave it alone. See if you can ride this one out because I've been riding several different waves. As you guys know, if you've been watching my exosomes updates, there have been lots of different waves, um, of just 
flare-ups of symptoms and weird things, and I just write it out. And I thought to myself, yes, I might have diarrhea and intestinal spasms, but if I take my IVIG and I don't respond well to it, I'm going to, on top of the diarrhea and the spasms, I'm going to end up having headache, neck pain, increased thoracic tightness, which I was already having an increase in the tightness. If you saw that, that update, um, I mean, I just felt horrible. So I wrote it out. Um, and I was sort of trying to time the IVIG, um, cause I had a lot of, I did a lot of blood work in October and I was like, you know what, do all your blood work first and then try the IVIG again. And so that kind of kept me from jumping to, you know, jumping back into it. And eventually, yes, I did start feeling better without the IVIG. Um, I was still having some stomach issues, but it seemed to be coming down and, um, and I was, you know, feeling better without the IVIG. So I was like, okay. And I kind of saw what my sort of baseline would be without it. And I thought by the end of October, I was like, okay, I should, I should try it. I'm going to try a very small dose. So one of the things that happened with my hands was that, and keep in mind again, I was like half asleep or half awake, whatever. This hand, my right hand, fell asleep like it would like I guess it just fell asleep and it happened a few times because I remember waking up and then just like shaking my hand and again I'm like half awake and and you know I immediately fall back to sleep as soon as I get my hand going again but I recall that it seemed to keep falling asleep you know it was really weird and I don't usually yes it ha it does happen or it has happened to me before I guess maybe if I'm like laying on my hand when I fall asleep but it was very weird the other thing that happened was my left hand I remember waking up and my hand was like in a fist and then when I tried to open that fist my, my hand was hurting like my fingers were all hurting so it hurt to like open my hand and then I fell back to sleep so I kind of thought like did I did I dream that was I dreaming this stuff um, and I don't think I was like, I, you know, I don't think I could make that up. I don't think I had any dreams that night. I was just dead asleep, but I recall that happening. And I guess, I mean, pain would wake you up. Um, and of course I've had the fogginess, you know, today in particular, even though it's already been like three, four days since the infusion. Um, I mean, obviously it's probably still in my system and it takes a while from like when I did it in August, it took like two weeks for me to like write out whatever this reaction is. I'm hoping that this time it only takes me like one week since it was like only, you know, 2.5 grams. Um, so I'm hoping by the end of the week that I will feel better. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I've been feeling the fogginess. I did feel kind of a loss of appetite because before I did this, I actually had felt an increase in appetite. Um, and so I, I have been feeling kind of a loss of appetite, so I'm not sure if that's the IVIG or if that's just normal fluctuation of, of whatever's going on with me, but, um, I've had a little bit of leg pain, but I was having leg pain before anyways, um, on and off. So I don't think, I, I think that I'm, you know, this is probably it. I have already been notified by the infusion company that they're going to discharge me. They said I had two months and I think I'm getting close to those two months. So I may just call them and have them discharge me um, because I'm not receiving any more medication. And from what it looks like, I'm not responding well to it anyways. I don't know why this is happening. And my doctors have been less than helpful. Um, as you know, I spoke to the vice president of the company of the uh, that provided the exosome product. He was useless. And then my own doctor has been pretty useless as well when it comes to explaining that. I, I don't expect them to have all the answers, but it's like, come on, you know, let's tr let's try to brainstorm this one. And I've really gotten not not much from them. Um, I'm trying to put the pieces together in my head. That's really all that I can do is kind of conjecture and make things up. So I, I can't really say for sure I know what's going on, but to me, um, 
I guess the only way that I can, my, my own logic, my own flawed logic or my own, you know, like I said, putting the pieces together myself is that, um, I still have been fighting infection, which, um, before I did the exosomes, my body was not fighting infections well. So I was getting, you know, kind of like recurrent infections and that kind of thing. And IVIG is supposed to help you fight infections, and it wasn't doing that. Now my body appears to be, since I did the exosomes, I seem to be holding off infections well. I haven't, I haven't gotten one for several months, and it seems like on that, you know, in that area, things seem to be doing pretty good. Um, I feel kind of like my SIBO is better, which technically is an infection or an overgrowth of bacteria. Um, you know, and so I'm thinking to myself, well, my immune system is doing something. It seems like my immune system is like stronger. So if my immune system is stronger, but I also have an autoimmune illness or some kind of autoimmune type of situation going on that causes the muscle stiffness and the neurological issues, then my guess is that when I'm taking the IVIG, it's like supercharging my immune system and it's just attacking me even harder. Um, so it's, and because the things that get worse when I take IVIG are the neurological things, which would be, you know, the, the stiff person syndrome, autoimmune symptoms. Um, and so that's my own logical conclusion. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm right. I have no idea. I'm not a doctor, but that's the only way that I can explain it is that my immune system is getting like a massive supercharge and it's just attacking my nervous system or distressing my nervous system in some way. And, um, and that, that may be why I've also experienced a flare up of my neurological symptoms on exosomes, even though I am now fighting infection. So, you know, I, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I don't know if I'm right. Um, I can only guess because, like I said, my doctors have been less than helpful during this whole situation. But it's a little scary to um, to think that I'm going to end up losing this medication. It was the only medication that ever helped me. But at the same time, especially after this situation in October with, you know, the diarrhea and I mean, I don't know if it was food poisoning. I don't know what it was. It was interesting to sort of, like I said, ride the wave and just let things happen um, and see if the exosomes themselves could handle it. And obviously at this point, there aren't any exosomes, I guess, in my system, but there's something going on in my body. There's some kind of process going on because there's a lot of ebbing and flowing of symptoms. You know, I'll have knee pain one day, that'll go away, I'll have... Um, you know, maybe arm pain or something one day and then that'll go away. So I don't know if, if that's, you know, the process, if there is some process that is still continuing because I am nine months out. Um, and I guess if there is some process that is still ongoing, then I guess that would be a good sign. That means that the work has not been done yet, that there's still, you know, there's still more work to be done or that my body is still doing something. Um, but yeah, it is, it is kind of scary because having the pharmacy, the pharmacy basically gave me an ultimatum. They're like, you know, if, if we don't receive any uh, word from you in the next two months, we're discharging you. Um, I do believe I still will have my prescription until next September, but I think if they alert my neurologist and let my neurologist know that I'm not taking my medication, which I'm guessing they're probably going to do that, um, she's probably going to contact me and say, Hey, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? Um, and I don't think she was too thrilled with, um, you know, the last time that I spoke to her, I don't think she was really thrilled about the whole situation, but you know, I, I don't know, you know, I, I'm now in this difficult situation. I will be talking to more doctors. I have, um, I have seen already a rheumatologist. I've seen a new primary care doctor. Um, and I will be talking to other, another doctor. Um, I'll be following up with my rheumatologist next week and then speaking to another doctor who actually uses exosomes in his practice. So I'm hoping that I could get some kind of 
clarity on what's going on um, or maybe some encouragement or maybe something because my own doctors, um, you know, are not really, the people in charge are not really helping the situation. And I do think that it is their responsibility to, to do something or, or at least to, to clarify um, what exactly is happening. Um, and they're not doing that. So all I can do is guess. Um, but I just wanted to post this um, for those of you out there that are on IVIG and that are considering doing exosomes. Um, or even I have seen questions, um, in the exosomes group on Facebook, people that use like medical marijuana or CBD or other types of things, wondering if they will have to stop using that if they do exosomes. And I guess the answer to that question would be you, you might, you don't know how you're going to respond to exosomes. And if your body responds the way that mine has, you may just start rejecting, um, you know, whatever medications have been helping you or that you've been taking. And it makes it difficult because, um, I have nothing really to help with pain or to help with discomfort, uh, during this treatment. And it has been kind of painful. Um, and that's saying a lot because, because severe pain is not really one of my symptoms, Although, you know, I've told you guys before I have had severe pain and there are a lot of other people, you know, especially people with SPS and Lyme disease, one of the main symptoms is severe pain. So if you don't have anything to help with that, you know, during this treatment, I think it can be um, pretty brutal. That's kind of what I'm sort of discovering on this journey. But anyways, I wanted to give you guys that update because it's important and I feel like the IVIG journey is coming to a close and it is scary, but I don't, um, you know, I kind of feel like in, before I did the IVIG this week, because obviously I'm feeling gross because of the IVIG I, right now, I kind of have like a little headache and some neck pain. But before that, I was actually feeling, like I said, I was having increased appetite and I kind of thought to myself, I think I'm in a good place right now where I'm not that scared of letting go of the IVIG. Um, granted, I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know if I'm going to continue to have that appetite, if it's going to even get, get better, if I'm going to gain weight, because I'm still, you know, um, two pounds lighter than I was prior to doing the exosomes. Um, so, you know, I kind of felt a little bit more confident because I wrote out that whole situation in October um, and I survived it and I actually started feeling better, but again, I don't know the, the permanence of all of this that has come out of the exosomes treatment. Um, so that, that has yet to be seen, but anyways, this is, this is a long update. Um, thank you guys for following me on this journey. I'm still going to have monthly updates, um, at least up to the 12 month point, but it's feeling like, I feel like this is just going on forever. Like I cannot even tell you, <laughs> this just feels like it's never ending. So, um, there may be just many more updates to come. So anyways, thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next one.